Hello everyone, welcome to a video on exploring the differences between synchronous and asynchronous bug converters as well as gate drivers. The asynchronous consists of one MOSFET and one diode. These will be the two main switches to control the power to the load. When the MOSFET's on, the passive components are able to charge, but when the MOSFET's off, the current cannot flow to the inductor, which causes the inductor to change in polarity and reverse its voltage, thus creating a forward bias on the diode and turning the diode on. Since the current can only flow in one direction, there is no negative current, and this is known as the discontinuous mode. As shown in this figure, there is no negative component in discontinuous, whereas continuous there is. The asynchronous is typically more simple and more inexpensive compared to the synchronous book, but it trails it in efficiencies for large power and high frequency application. Next, we have the synchronous book. The diode from the previous configuration is replaced with another MOSFET to have a synchronous buck. These two MOSFETs, again, act like switches and are controlled by a gate driver. With the two MOSFETs, the synchronous buck can flow in both directions, positive and negative, known as continuous mode, as shown here. Although the synchronous is more complex to control, but it is better in efficiency for large power application. Looking closely at the gate driver, the gate driver cycles through turning the high side and low side of the MOSFET on and off. The gate driver is responsible for applying voltage and providing a drive current to the two gates of the MOSFET to turn on. Hence the name gate driver. It's pretty much a power amplifier that takes in a low input, typically from a microcontroller, MCU, and provide a high current for the gate. Here are the references used for the slides and in this video. We're going to go look into a real synchronous book converter on Tina. From a previous video, we explored the synchronous book converter provided by Tina. This steps down from 12 volts to 2.5 volts. We have here the high side drive and we have the low side. If we look at the transient response, we will see that the current the inductor changes in direction or continuous mode. So if you forgot from the previous video, you would go into analysis, then transient. Let's make this one millisecond. And here we can look at the steady state for the inductor current. As shown here, it shows that yes, it is in continuous mode. The current is reversing in direction. For the MOSFET to turn on, we look at the voltage threshold. So there had to be at least 3.405 volts for the MOSFET to turn on. And as we could see, we put here voltmeters, HD gate and LD gate. And as shown, we, when it's on, When it's on, it's definitely getting more than the 3.4 volts it required.
and same goes for the low drive. It's getting about 20, 20 volts. We're going to look closely at the voltages at the gate drivers for both MOSFETs. It's important that the gate driver can prevent both MOS MOSFETs from being turned on at the same time. If they are on at the same time, V in can get shorted. V in can get shorted to the ground and the circuit would fail. So we're going to look at just the curve at the low drive and the high drive. We're just going to zoom in here. And notice here that it never overlaps, which is exactly what we're hoping to see. And that's it for this video. Thank you.